Hey, Dane, welcome back. How are you, man? Good, good. Long day. Get some stuff done. Uh, watch a lot of video, a lot of game film. Man, this time over, of year. Huh? Oh, yeah. This time of year, that college uh, football season's about ready to ramp up. So ready to watch some games. It's, it's that time of year, man, where um, it's like that. Okay, summer's starting to creep up on being over. The best time of the year, college football, which we've even said we, even though we love all sports, we love college sports a little bit more than pro. Um, so right around the corner, man, we got about a month out before the season gets rolling for college. It's going to be great. And we're actually blessed, Dane. Um, there's a family that we've got a chance to work with. It's been amazing. Yep. Got a chance yep. to work with Jordan from Texas Tech. Uh, his mom, shout out to his mom, Irish. Just a great human being. Love her. Yep. I found out there's a connection that there's one of his uh, brothers that we call it God Brothers uh, actually plays for. KU man, KU. Yeah. And you know, you know, we're okay with KU. There's no, there's no issue. They're not wearing orange, right? So we're good. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, with all respect, they, they were, they were, they were um, KU colors, which is fine. Um, yeah. Great, great wide receiver, number two, doing big things, just coming out, just impressive, impressing everybody. And to be honest, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and call it. I can't wait till he makes it to the NFL. I'm going to say that right now. It's going to happen. So I'm going to get right yeah. down to it and bring on one of our favorite wide receivers himself, LJ Arnold. LJ, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Thank you. And I, I appreciate you speaking into existence for me because I'm big on speaking into existence, too. I'm real big on this. I appreciate that. It's good. It's going to happen, man. Just do me a favor. Let's go ahead and call it now because I'm a, I'm a Rams fan. I need you to go ahead and sign with the Rams. Just do me that favor. <laughs> Let's not make a fuss about it. Just do it for me, okay? <laughs> so, hey, if they want me, I go. They want let's go. me, I'm near. Oh, there Perfect. you go. All right. I got you, man. Awesome. So, Elder, we've got some questions for you. I think you're going to like these, man. So, I'm going to kick it off. Um, take me back, man, before being um, a stellar wide receiver, being really at this point known all, all across the league and worldwide, doing great things at KU before that, before high school. When did you first pick up a ball and start playing, man? What age were you? Uh, I was probably about four years old. Um, I grew up with my older cousin, staying with my grandma in Louisiana. So, I was probably about four years old. They had me playing street football. We all in the road playing because the, the grass, playing in the grass was kind of like playing in the road. So the road kind of counted in bounds. So I grew up then. My big cousins, big brothers and everything. Oh, man. Dan can talk about that because he, he's my old oh, uncle. Yeah. There's, there's nothing else more competitive than family football, right, Dan? Oh, yeah. They, 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 they push you to your limits and, and then some. So you, man, if, so you, if, you, if you can get – <laughs> If you can get through some of those games with your cousins and brothers that are older than you, then you this is a walk in the park at the college level. <laughs> I love it, man. LJ, I'm curious, man. When you t- when you talk about that though, um, when you started playing at a young age, um, when did you, uh, you know, Pop Warner, all of the early days of football? When did you first start playing football, kind of more competitively? What age were you? You know, um, I was about, I want to say about nine to ten years old. Um, we moved to Texas. And I started playing with the North Texas Rams uh, in Richardson, in Richardson, Texas, in Dallas. I started playing with them, and I was originally a quarterback in the safety my whole life until, like, uh, eighth grade, high schoolish. But I was originally a quarterback in safety until I – and then I made that transition. Okay, okay. okay. So, so, so when you made the – finally made the transition to wide receiver, what was it about that position that – you know, that made you want to go to that? Was it uh, your athleticism or was it a coach's decision or, or was it kind of a collaboration of you and the coaching staff to do that? Um, it was kind of a collaboration of both. Um, and I kind of found receiver easier because I was very athletic and I was already tall at a young age. Mm-hmm. So playing receiver was very easy for me because most of the DBs was like five foot, five one, and I was like five eight, five nine. <laughs> so it made it easier for me. And then I kind of uh, in eighth grade, I got to I got to experience playing seven on seven uh, mm-hmm. with the varsity team, and they let me play in one of the uh, and like one of the little just seven on seven games with them. And then uh, I, I caught like two touchdowns in that game, and I was like. Yeah, I kind I like playing receiver. This post <laughs> man, yeah. See, at that point, you were hooked, man. At that point, I would like to find that ball, man. If you ever find that ball, sign it for me, man. I got you. I'll put it on my my wall, man. That's awesome. Did you play 
alongside of playing football, I know a lot of uh, athletes are multi-sport. Did you yeah. play other sports yeah. too alongside yeah. of football I, growing up? I played basketball and I ran track. Okay. Okay. That's where that speed comes from. I got you, man. So um, talk about influence. I need a little bit about the family and uh, history and playing with the family. Is there maybe if you could narrow it down, maybe it's a coach or a cousin or someone who's had that biggest influence on you so far as an athlete in your career? Um, my biggest influence is the athlete. Uh, I would say my big brother. And the reason I would say him is because like I watched him, you know, grow up and develop and mature through like just things he went through in life. And then in sports, going through injuries and he ended up, not being able to play in college because he had a, a career ending injury. He uh, mm. got kneed in his thigh and tore his tissue and ripped his quad. So he mm. couldn't play no more. But the fact oh, wow. that he still came back once he recovered and was still very good in basketball, kind of just like lost a little passion for it because of everything <laughs> that happened and losing the scholarships. And But he always stayed on me about like, keep going for your dream and keep pushing and stay motivated. And to this day, like he, my biggest mentor to this mm. day, like going talking to him about everything. So just seeing everything he went through and the mistakes that he made, it, kinda, it made me the person that I am because it showed mm. me the right. He always say this, like the mistakes he made led a path for me to show me the right and wrong things to mm. do. So just seeing the road he went down held a, a big accountability thing on me. I love that, man. That's yeah. awesome. Man. It, it, it's, and it's always great when you get somebody that likes that, that, that loves you sometimes beyond their, their themselves and they want what's best for you as well. So that's, that's a great, uh, great thing to have as a big brother. I have three myself. And like I say, growing up, they want you to succeed more than probably they have. So that's a great, great person to have as an influence. Now, as we go into turning into this season here, um, what what do you look for on the horizon for you for this year? Do you have a couple of goals that you've set personally and as a team that you're looking to accomplish this year? So uh, what does the season look like for you? Uh, well, I go into the team part first because I'm real big on team. You know, I'm not a mm -hmm. selfish person. I'm real big on team. And our team goal this year is just our goal is win big to win a big 12. And yeah, I know Jordan go to Texas Tech, and I already told him we going <laughs> they gonna have to see us then. But our biggest goal is just win the Big Twelve, um, and just make sure we keep a brotherhood um, at KU. Just make sure we stand tight and having that relationship outside of football. But mm -hmm. in football, we wanna we wanna win the Big Twelve and have a chance to make history. KU like we did last year and get into a bowl game since 2009. So just um, being able to lay our brick there, you know, like have mm -hmm. something there that, that we established and we can always come back and have our kids go there and be like, look, like my name's on here. We laid this brick <laughs> to help build this foundation. So that's, that's a big thing with us, with the team and our culture. And like me individually, um, I'm trying to have over a thousand yards this season. And mm. I feel like I could have did it last mm. season. Uh, but, you know, we got a very talented receiver room and offense. So that kind of played a large role in the yards and catches and targets. So mm -hmm. I, I feel for that. But this year I'm trying to have a thousand yards. I had about 760 yards, 45 catches. <laughs> so at least 50 catches with a thousand yards. Wow. Oh, I know, man. And I think you got about 400 of that when you played us last year, dude. I was like, man, <laughs> look at this guy. He's just – I watched you run all over us, man. I was like, I love watching – again, I, I, it's this – we've learned doing this, LJ, that really, honestly, and all joking aside, we even respect Texas. There's no team we don't respect. Yeah. It, this has taught us, even though we might have a team that, you know, we've rooted for on Saturday, we're still going to root for everybody. And watching yeah. athletes like yourself, the, the caliber of person that you are, I told you when we were kind yeah. of talking off the air – um, you're you're molding the next generation. You talk about laying yeah. the foundation or That's laying right. the bricks. That's what this is all about, man. You're a talented wide receiver. Again, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say going to make it in the NFL one day. Even beside that, what you're worried about is the next generation. And that's impressive, yeah. man, at your early age in your career that you're worried about the next generation. Shout out to you, man, for having that mindset to be that yeah, way. That's definitely. impressive, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. 
Yeah, man. So I'll tell you, there's a there's a transition um, in this episode every single time. I'm going to make you laugh for a little bit, okay? Um, every single time we get these questions from our fans, we have to stop and scratch our heads, right? I love it. <laughs> we have a yeah. segment, Elder, that we do. That it's called Rapid Fire. I told you a little bit about this. And what this is, they're, they're clean PG questions, but they're weird, random, <laughs> time doesn't exist stuff, okay? So here's the caveat. Sure. Dan and I bet on these, LJ, every time, and the winner gets lunch provided by the loser. I'm ahead of you, Dane, by about 400, right? <laughs> so you better catch up. I think we're in the 300s now. I'm, 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 I'm making some headway. So. I got you. So imagine, LJ, <laughs> this is a past or present, um, you know, fiction is reality anything can happen you have to pick okay. one of these two you can't not answer one of these questions okay so okay. you ready yep first question so imagine on part of opening day one of the one of the big 12 they make a ritual this year which you have to do right before the game and i'm not talking about off day before opening game you have to go out onto the field 50 yard line with the table you have to have a donut eating contest against one of these two individuals before the game you got to go against John Cena or The Undertaker before you take your first snap. Which one are you going with? Um, uh, hold on. Can you, wait, ask me the question again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So imagine it's 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 game day, and before the game starts, there's a table at the 50 yard line. Everybody's sitting there ready to go. You have to do a donut eating contest against either John Cena or Undertaker right there. Who are you competing against? Uh, I'm competing <laughs> against I'm competing against John Cena. Let's go. I had it, Dane. How about yeah, you? There you I go. Had it. Yeah. I had it. Oh, there yeah. you go. One for one. They got you. There you go. So oh, yeah, they gotta do that before you before you go at him, you gotta look yeah, at him. Yeah. yeah. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get one of these. Cena. Yeah. I love it. And then you have to like eat all those and then you go play, right? That was the, that was I love it, go. man. So one for one. <laughs> so next next question. Um uh, for a different type of team builder for you guys. Um, off day, learning to be more agile. You know, wide receivers are very agile. You guys are very flexible and, and lean. You guys are doing a parkour team building exercise. We got a parkour around all of, of Lawrence, but you have you have a uh, your captain that you're going parkouring with, if that's a word, is one of these two people, Zendaya, or you're gonna go parkouring with Gal Gadot, which is basically Wonder Woman. So Zendaya or Gal Gadot, who are you tag teaming to go parkouring with for the day? I'm getting um, it, man. I'm getting it, I, man. I'll, pro I'll probably do Zendaya. Thank you. Two for two. Spider-Man. Spider-Man's hot. <laughs> Spider-Man's a great movie. I told you. I knew he was going with it. I love watching her stuff. She's she's uh, she's awesome. So next one. So um, after the game, they're asking you guys. Typically, you know, we do, um, I mean, not after the game, before the game. Typically, we'll have national anthems. We'll have our songs, alma maters and all that. So they make a new tradition before the game starts. So this is after the John Cena thing, but before the first snap. You have to, on the Megatron, play Guitar Hero against one of these two people. And you gotta win to take the field. You gotta play Guitar Hero, legendary, against Conan O'Brien or Michael Scott from The Office. Who are you going against? Michael Scott. I knew it. I am three for oh, three, yeah. and I'm killing it, Dan. How about you? Let's go. <laughs> I got that one. I got that Let's one. go. Well, well, on the previous one, I was going with, uh, Wonder Woman, because I thought two superheroes parkouring together, and that'd be. Oh, I like that. Oh, there you superhero go. LJ, I like it. Get the cape. There you like go. That. that is good, but but Zendaya was with Spider Man. That's yeah. Like... It's it's just got the you know jumping around. Uh, Spider Man it, you know? do flips to dodge. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> there you go, man. So the two more, two more of the uh, rapid fire ones. So on 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 draft day, you're at the combine. You're doing your workout for the Rams. I'll say it again. So you have to wear one of these two masks the entire time you're doing your workout. You can't take it off. We're even for the press release, the photos, the whole deal. You have to wear A, Scorpion from Mortal Kombat, or B, a Batman mask the whole time, not taking it off. Which one are you going with? I got to go with the Scorpion man, because that's my favorite person to, to play with on um, Mortal Kombat. I knew it. I knew it, Dane. I am I am man. crushing it, man. Four for four. Did you get that one, Dane? That, no, no, I'm two for two. And I'm even Batman. wearing the shirt, dude. <laughs> Let's go. I'm just kidding, man. So last one. Now, I know, LJ, because you're in college, this might be a little bit before your time on this question. But again, sometimes it's going to go back in time. So the final thing. You know how a lot of times the captain will go out, flip a coin, that determines mm -hmm. who, you know, it's very simple, right? Now, yeah. what you have to do 
instead of flipping the coin, you guys have two games that you get to play for deciding who gets, who gets, you know, who wins. A, okay. you go out there, you and the other captain, and you get to play pool with them, pool tables on the field. Or B, you guys get to get down old school and play a game of pogs. Now, if you don't know what pogs are, man, this is when I was in school. They give you this stack of like these milk caps that have like Spider Man, Batman, it's emblems, right? And they're face down. You get a big old quarter and you slam them, and whatever ran, lands face up, you get to keep yep. it. Yeah. So I you're going so with I... pool or pogs? Yeah, I go, I go pool. I go oh. pool. I didn't have that one, man. Dane, what about you? Oh, yeah, I had pool. It's timeless. You got to go with it. You got to shoot some pool. So then you got me, Dane. Well, thank you, LJ, for letting Dane win, Dane. You're welcome. (laughs) I'm just kidding, man. (laughs) I'm totally kidding. But but LJ, thank you, man. Hopefully an interview you've had or or stuff. That's a segment you may have not seen before, so I appreciate you being a good sport, man. So Yes, sir. Always, always. Love it. Dane, go ahead, man. Yeah, LJ, on this segment, it's final segment, we call it open mic. We kind of open mm-hmm. up the floor to our guests to maybe tell us maybe a philosophy or a mantra that you've carried through your career of sports or um, music or anything like that. In, in your instance, obviously, it's it's football and sport. Is there something that you've kind of uh, came up with? You know, somebody's told you something at an early, early age. And maybe you've carried that with you, a philosophy or a mantra to kind of keep you pushing forward, keep you uh, eye on the prize, so to speak, is that you can mm-hmm. kind of maybe tell our younger viewers to kind of uh, help them along to get to the status you're at now. That's good. Um, one thing I say, I actually I actually got it tattooed on me, on my rib. Just say, uh, let your faith be bigger than your fear. Uh, my grew up in the church house when I was younger with my grandma. And we always went to church. And one thing she always taught us was always have faith in God. And mm. really in fear. It doesn't matter the situation. If you're scared or not, always have faith. It doesn't matter what higher being you have or you believe in. Just always have faith in something that you can overcome. It. Always got to have faith. I like what you're saying, OJ, about that. That's a powerful, powerful thing. And Dane and I, we talk a lot about on this show, OJ. We love it. Um, and again, we, we, we preface this. We respect anyone that represents their faith. And, and those that don't, that's fine too. Whatever you believe, that's fine. Yeah. Either way, way or the other. But when someone knows what they are or what they believe, whatever that may be, yeah. I've always found that inspiring to me. And again, I, I always preface anybody, all people are welcome. But when you say this is what makes yeah. me who I am, I love to hear about that. And you're you're taking that message and um, that leap of faith, right? Uh, you, thankfully, uh, we get to watch you be an amazing athlete and then a role yeah. model. But maybe that person's leap of faith is they want to be a doctor. Maybe they want to be a musician, right? Maybe yeah. they want to yeah. be a teacher. And you have to have different types of work ethic, but just like you have to do camps and workouts and grinds every day. Yeah. Maybe that kid who wants to be a teacher, they got to parallel that same work ethic into doing what they want yeah. to be. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. man, your, your message is powerful, man. Again, I love that. The the way you position that kind of giving thanks to, uh, you know, it's, it's bigger than yourself. And man, if yeah. you look at what you've already accomplished and yeah. the people that look up to you, these kids, man, whether you know it or not, you have a huge, uh, following that looks up to you. And I'm just glad that you, uh, you give them something to look up to, man. It's amazing yeah, seeing yeah, what you're doing, definitely. you know? Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Man, it's true, man. Like I said, you were yeah. – well, we saw you, and there's an ambassador of the sport. Um, and then I know we always say, man, athletes like yourself are gracious. You don't have to do these type of things. We know that. And no one's going to think any less of you. But it just it, you're wanting to spread that positive message. Yeah. And how could we not want to showcase that and celebrate that? So, LJ, yeah. we just can't say enough. Thank you for that, man. Yeah, definitely. Dane, do you have yes, anything sir. to add to that? Yes, sir. Dane, anything to add to that? Because that's just powerful, man. No, I mean, time and again, we we talk to a lot of athletes that are in college or, or even, you know, musicians or anybody we talk to that has a message like yours at, at such a young age to have that headspace to know that, hey, this is my message. This is what brings me along. And let me pass it to that next generation. Like you said, it, it's the, the sports always in great hands and the world is in great hands with, with individuals like yourself that are willing to pass great messages on to the younger generation. So mm. we, on behalf of them, we thank you for that. Yeah, man. Thank you. Yes, well, LJ, uh, LJ, with that, man, that breakdown, is there anything, any maybe final words, man, because we appreciate you taking time. Is there anything in closing you want to kind of say to the audience? Um, closing this, I'll just say for all, of my Jayhawk fan. Oh yeah. And it's, for, every, for everybody else, you know, who 
going through things because I got a picture in my car of my cousin who passed from uh from suicide about a year and a half ago, and I keep it in my car. And I just want to say for everybody who's going through something, just know you it's always somebody you can lean on, talk to, or call. It's always somebody there for you, even if oh, you man. feel like it's not. Somebody's always there for you. Oh, man. LJ, that's all I, I got for you. No, that's awesome, man. I, I got to tell you the story, LJ, but before you go, um, if you have a second, there's a we've interviewed a band. There's a there's a rock band called Disciple. Yeah. We do sports and music, right? And I share the story a lot, LJ. This guy was listening to one of their songs and he was contemplating, you know, taking his life, right? And he said, "Man, I heard this song come on," and then he decided to hold off. That song hit him. Went to the show, took the bullet he had in that gun, made a necklace, and gave it to the dude at the show and said, "Hey, you helped me get past a really bad time in my life. You keep this." I don't need it anymore. Thank you for helping me get through a dark time in my life, man. So what you're doing, LJ, helping people maybe realize that yeah. somebody does care and love them. And yeah. I see you actively talking to people online. I see you a lot responding to your fans and all that. Yeah. Do what you're doing goes a long way. There might have been a kid who didn't know how they were going to make it through the day. And what you're doing, responding to kids, man. Yeah. Shout out to you, man. That, that's a powerful thing yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. So we, we, we salute you for that, man, for real. Yeah. So. I appreciate that. Man, I will say this in closing because I know you got camps to get to and, and rest and all that. There's two important dates coming up. I need you to do me a favor and put about 75 points on the board when you guys play on September 30th for me. Go ahead and do that when you play Texas. I need you to do that. Go ahead and do <laughs> oh, rock them. Break the scale. We're Let's go. Right. We try to break right. the scale. And I got a lot of I got a lot of uh, alumni friends that um from the they know it's always all love and great competition but i told everybody we coming from this year we always oh, get put the underdog and i love being the underdog so we coming this year all right. uh, i don't think i don't think that after last year man i don't think that i really, yeah. really think you yeah. guys i i mean it being from norman i think you guys will win the big 12 and i'm not just saying that um we will yeah. be at the game too because we go to every home game but we're gonna watch you guys when we're there october 28th we'll see you so i'm hoping to maybe get a photo with you say hi we'll be there when we play you on the 28th yeah. man so i can't wait okay, okay. Sound great. awesome man we'll be in touch lj please yeah. let it be known that's the first of many man you're welcome back anytime you're part of the alum uh we really respect yeah. you and appreciate your time uh we'll get this message out as soon as we can the world and uh good yeah. luck on a great season and we'll be watching yeah. every one of yeah. your games i promise you man yeah. so yes, sir. I, I appreciate y'all for having me on here and taking the time <laughs> out to uh to hit me up to get me on the show so i really appreciate that yeah. Yeah. my pleasure Thank man you. we'll, we'll yeah. be in touch Best you take care and we'll and we'll catch up soon okay so okay yeah, have a thanks good man one. Right. you too hey, have a good have night. A great all right have a great season dan i'm telling you man i love that dude like oh god i love that kid we think yeah yeah, just just you know, so gracious and, and thoughtful to everybody around him. You know, you, you mm -hmm. can't say it. You can't say enough about those kind of people. And, and when they're young like that, it it's, makes you even more proud that you've taken a piece of them, maybe the piece of their mind, like he gave us tonight, and, and gave a great message. And and you wish them nothing but the best in in life and in their sport. So man. I mean, great, great people around the sports in great hands. The world's in great hands, like I said, with, with people like that coming around and being around the young, the young, well, even older guys like me taking something Man. from him and, and learning from him. So that was awesome. I wish him nothing but the best this, this year. Yeah. So, Man. We'll be watching. I tell you, man, and it's like this, this doing this has really opened my mind up to how many, because when I, when I, you know, again, I'm not taken away from, our, our our tradition our culture and you know norman and all that but i'm realizing there's a lot of amazing athletes worldwide yeah. that are not a norman you know and it's like wow yeah. and this this kid i he's he's speaking about humbly but the ability he had yeah. almost 800 yards receiving last year man this is yeah. a stud you know and when yeah. he said about all of that if you notice i paid attention i wrote this note he spent about 20 seconds talking about breaking records and like seven minutes talking about how do I help somebody? How do I help somebody yeah. else? Yeah. How do I help the next kid? I just yeah. I can't get away from that, Dane. So it just, yeah. that's the kind of stuff we want to, we, we want to showcase and why we do this. So yeah, I think it's going to be a great season. I have no doubt, LJ. I think it's going to be a big 12. Hopefully it's us and them in the big 12 championship. Yeah. You know there what you I'm go. saying? But let's do that. But I have no doubt in my mind, man. Then they got it. They got their schedule this year, Dane, is no joke. They got the Bearcats. Yeah. They got they got Texas. They got Oklahoma State. They got us. Um, they got a good they got a good schedule, right? But I think they can pull it off. I do. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a grind. I mean, they'll just build yeah. on what they did last year. I mean, since '09, they haven't been to a bowl, and they took one last year. So yeah, they I did. Mean, nothing building, and like he said, the bricks 
one builds on the other and lay the and bricks man. Hopefully. that was good yeah that was cool I like that well yeah. well lj thank you for your time thank you ku all of you ku fans out there don't say yeah. we don't ever do the free ku people because we do love <laughs> you too <laughs> so um we got one more day after this we've got a um we got I'm excited. We have a DJ uh, who's worked yeah. with Petty and all that. So I'll get into that in a second. I'll introduce him making his debut on the show. It's going to be a great one. So we're going to take a little breather, um, pause, and come back for the final episode of the night. So don't forget, as always, that we love you. And Dane? Thank you for listening.